Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have Doug Vickerson, the CEO of Renoworks Software, to give us an update since our last call. Renoworks trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol RW and on the OTC under ROWKF. The company is trading at about 48 cents with roughly 36.5 million shares outstanding or about a $17.5 million market cap. I'd now like to hand it over to Paul Andriola. Uh, excellent. Thanks, Trev. Um, yeah, very happy to have Doug uh, Vickerson here. Doug, we go way back. Um, we've uh, we've obviously followed the story for, for a long time. Um, I'll say right off the bat that I've been a long-term shareholder and uh, recently picked up a little bit more stock just uh, a few days ago. Um, and uh, you just announced a record quarter. Um, so happy to have you here to basically talk about uh, uh, the, the quarter. Um, and, and how things look going forward. But um, why don't we spend just a minute or two to sort of give everybody sort of a, a recollection of, uh, of what uh, Renoworks does. So, yeah, thank you, Paul. Thank you, you know, again, Paul said long-term supporter. Uh, you know, Paul's been extremely beneficial. So thank you personally. I can see uh, some uh, other uh, good supporters on the line as well. Uh, I won't mention you by name, but uh, uh, I always like to see the supporters that I've talked to over over the years. And you know, so so Renework Software, you know, our DNA and our starting in this industry has been a long time now, twenty years, and we started as a design company, helping people design the remodel projects. And over the course of 20 years, we're, we're still doing design. That's still uh, kind of how we're getting into our customer doors and we're focusing on design. But I think that, uh, you know, where we're at right now is much more of a platform play uh, you know, we, we look at the value chain of how a homeowner purchases remodel projects, and we're looking at every aspect of the process to purchase a remodel project. And remodel projects, you know, they can be anywhere from five to a hundred thousand dollars when you're talking about your home or even more. And so we look at every aspect of that, and we're quite frankly, we're building a platform to change the way that people typically buy remodel projects. And then, you know, kind of working with all the players, the homeowners, the manufacturers, the contractors, distribution. And so really getting a lot more clarity every day that we're in this business, how, you know, obviously how the business works, but how we, are you know working to be a player in that industry, and and literally you know kind of disrupt how how people do business. Yeah, I know exactly. That's one of the things I like. Uh, I've got a background in construction, uh, so I, I see the need for for new technology and new products to change the way an old old business uh, has been run. Um, so in another two minutes just spent on specifically sort of how a client uh, uses a product. I, I, maybe I'll, I'll explain a little bit and you can follow up if I, if I make any mistakes here. But really what you guys have is a visualization software that allows people to almost remotely access information that traditionally somebody physically would have to, to sort of, you know, bring. So whether it's a contractor showing you know, samples of roofing material or siding um, or somebody who physically has to come there to measure your house. Now, a lot of these things that are necessary for these contractors to, to give estimates, you can do remotely completely using, you know, your software and your partner's software. Yeah, uh, uh, 100%, Paul. So I'll just kind of mention through our partners, so, th you know, and, and our, our main businesses that we work with would be considered enterprise companies. Many of them are multi-billion dollar companies. Most of our partners are building products manufacturers. In, in the course of the year, we have about, you know, 3 million interested homeowners that come to our platform 
every year. And that's only, you know, that's growing every year. And I say interested homeowners because some way, somehow they, they made it to our partner website. So they're already kind of a warm lead. And then what we want to do with those interested homeowners is kind of nurture, engage with them so that they can define their project you know, whatever project that they're doing. So I think it's important that you said, Paul, virtual. So we all know how we buy product online right now. It's very easy. It's shipped to us, you know, sometimes same day, overnight. Uh, people's buying behaviors are changing. In, in the industry that I'm in, it, it has been typically a laggard in adopting technology but all of our customers want to go there. So we're saying to our customers, those 3 million homeowners that are coming to the platform, they, quite frankly, they have no idea where they eventually end up. You know, do they, you know, do they go and contact a, a contractor that's going to sell a different product? Do they go to Home Depot and by, they have no clarity or visibility into those 3 million homeowners. So we're saying to our customers, and we're building a platform to say, hand those 3 million customers over to us, and we'll take care of them from end to end. And I kind of use this analogy, and many of you have probably you know, heard me use this analogy before. And I use the NFL because 90% of our customers are American. You know, what we want to do is for a homeowner who is sitting down and about to watch a, a football game, type in their address to our platform. By the time the football game is over, they get a photo of their home that they can virtually remodel. We've built a 3D model so that they can spin and see all sides of the home. They have all the measurements. They would have every piece of you know product that they would need to do any remodel project so nails underlayment you know everything basically a material list they could get a estimate high level estimate of what a project would cost and then we could introduce to them uh different contractors that would want to bid on their project so simplifying the process and I kind of, right at the beginning of, you know, Paul, you asked me, what do we do? And our DNA has been designed, but we're, we're focusing more now entirely on that value chain, simplifying the whole process, almost creating a mini marketplace that can reside on a manufacturer's website. And another good way to think about that is if you're familiar with Shopify. So Shopify builds software to allow businesses to have e-commerce on, on, on their website and they build a platform. We're doing that for this industry, which is obviously much more complex than just selling, you know, a product online. The, the, it's a very uh, complex kind of thing to put together for a whole remodel project. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, I'm going to recommend anybody who now sort of enticed by what we've heard today, we've done a lot more um, sort of Q&A and there's a lot more information on one of the old uh, interviews we've done with Doug. So um, a lot more in-depth uh, description and talk about the business there. What I want to do now is really dive into Q3 and let's talk about the, sort of the numbers. And, uh, and then maybe a little bit about what uh, things might look like going forward. Um, record quarter in Q3, um, just over 1.4 million, um, which was up 33% uh, over the same period last year. Uh, you were sequentially up over Q2, which was always nice to see. But I, I really want to talk about um, sort of what, what we're following really closely, and that's the design services component. Uh, you grew your design services uh, year over year by 97%. Um, why don't you give us a little bit of color on both the overall revenue and uh, growth in design services? So over, you know, a little bit of color. 2019 was uh, kind of a building year. We invested a lot of money in the platform. 
we're, we're you know, we're seeing, I would say only some of the hard work that we did back in 2019, we're only seeing some of it in 2020, quite frankly. Uh, in 2019, we integrated with Eagle View and the measurement side of filling out that, that value chain. We're, we're, we continue to do a lot of work with Eagle View. I, you know, I can maybe expand on that a, a little bit later. So when you look at you know all of 2020, uh, we're you know we're just kind of continuing on with our strategy to bring on new customers onto our platform and continue selling the you know the different aspects of our platform to you know new customers and and existing customers. So, you, you know, part of our growth in all the quarters this year, but specifically Q3, has just been us kind of executing on our strategy. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about two things specific to kind of, you know, the whole year, but then also into the, you know, into the design services. So I, I, th I think most people are probably aware of this right now. Uh, you know, it's, it's out in the news a lot, but, you know, when COVID hit, you know, mid-March for most people, uh, everyone was, you know, somewhat tenuous on what was going to happen to all business. We, we fell in, into that same boat and we were trying to understand what would happen. As it stands, as most everyone knows, the industry that we are in has done quite well. The, the overall new home construction, the remodeling, obviously Depot and Lowe's are showing amazing results. So I, th I think part of what you're seeing and, and you know, kind of the good news is that there are many companies in our industry saying we, we need to adopt new technology to kind of face not only COVID, but the new, the, the new reality of how things are, are being done in our industry. So we obviously play into that because we're basically a virtual selling software. So we're, we're seeing the positive effects of that. And, and I think our industry was moving quicker to adopt technology and new ways of doing business the the pandemic has only you know exacerbated that and kind of you know increased the speed of that so we can we continue to see a lot of that right now specifically to design services th there's there's probably two things that i want to say about design services so the one thing is and and it, you know it, it's a result of COVID. We, we have seen a lot of increased usage uh, of people who are investing in their home. So that's a direct correlation to people investing in their home that, that has increased our design services. The other thing, again, this is more, you know, kind of longer term and, and, you know, should bode well longer term for design services, whether, you know, if everyone starts traveling again and they're not spending money on their home as much, you know, design services shil should still do well. And the reason being is that, you know, quarter by quarter, from a data science standpoint and an analytics standpoint, we are showing that our design services work is leading to increased sales for our customers so that the ROI is there. And, and for those of you who, you know, haven't heard me talk before about what design services is, it's basically we, and I'm just going to go to a slide here. I'm not going to show it, but um, actually I don't, if you want to, give me a screen share, I could show a slide, I can describe it. But design services is basically manufacturers partnering with us and we're actually taking projects and kind of becoming the designer of those projects 
for our customers and, and, and we're working directly with homeowners on that. So, you know, in 2018, we did just under 12,000 projects. In 2019, we just did about 20,000 projects. And so far this year, with about, a, you know, just over a month left, we're at about 26,000 projects. And that will obviously increase. Uh, so, so just to kind of end the, the conversation on, on why, you know, we're growing in design services. So obviously the pandemic has something to play with that. But I also see the longer term uh, part of that continuing to grow as we kind of prove out the ROI of, um, you know, that service for our customers. I, I, you know, I think you guys fall into the same category as a lot of other sort of online businesses. What, what the pandemic's really done is it's um, sped up the adoption process of these sort of technologies and how they're changing industries. So um, interesting to, to see that it's it, just that, that it's, and I agree, I think it's, it's here for the long term. Um, it's right. going to be hard to, to go back uh, once, once this is adopted. Um, okay, so we, uh, we've had two back-to-back -back quarters of profitability. Now, mind you, last quarter, there's some um, government subsidies that helped you reach profitability, but this quarter was a true profitable quarter, albeit it was still relatively small. We're talking 27,000. Um, but um, it's safe to say, um, I mean, if you're, if you're going to hit 1.4 million-ish in revenue, um, it, I, it should continue to be profitable. Um, but unless you are looking at other increase in expenditures, now you, you've invested sort of in marketing, you've invested in R&D, do you see any increase in spend going forward? So a um, couple, couple of things on that. You know, our, our industry is very cyclical. So, you know, we like to say it kind of follows an M curve mm -hmm. where, you know, going into the spring, that's a pretty high uh, time for remodeling it dips a, a little bit in the summer and then kind of finishes off in the fall uh, to get all the fall projects so we you know and, and if you look at our quarters uh, th they've kind of followed that th this year the m curve is a little bit flat on top so it doesn't really dip that much in uh, you know obviously a record q3 so i think i think You'll see in Q4 another, you know, strong growth quarter. If you compare it quarter over quarter, mm -hmm. uh, we're we're seeing good signs right now. We're already kind of you know two thirds into Q4. We're you know can, I, I kind of look at you know our EBITDA, you know, looking at um, positive EBITDA again you know, to kind of finish out the year. So, so that's good. Kind of our strategy from an investment standpoint is we're, we're, we're not necessarily risk averse. We're, you know, kind of our strategy right now is to kind of, you know, stay at that positive EBITDA quarter over quarter continuing to invest uh, you know profits back into you know building out the platform uh, we you know again I think I think the the prize the that we see kind of the blue sky that we see is that we we want to participate in this 400 billion dollar plus industry so by participating, is if we're actually facilitating transactions, you know, connecting homeowners with contractors, that's what we want to participate in. We want to be a disruptor in the market. So to answer your question, Paul, I think, I think we, we will invest back in, in, into the platform, but we're not going to invest right now in, you know, taking any huge risks or anything like that kind of, organically investing we've you know we're always out there you know looking for opportunities we're you know we're pr pretty excited about 
some of the opportunities that we're seeing, you know, and, and without getting into any detail on specifics, but what RenoWorks is building, kind of our platform and our ability to take a homeowner from start to finish, that technology is actually pretty hard to duplicate. I mean, you know, all the years that we've spent working with the 350 plus manufacturers to digitize their product, that takes a long time to do. And it takes a long time to develop the relationships to do that. So um, there, you know, there are other companies that look at that technology and they're complementary companies to us and say, wow, we want to bring some of your technology onto our platform. And so, you know, we're looking at some interesting uh, opportunities there and that, that could significantly change some of our trajectory. So that's, that's good. Uh, and, you know, so again, definitively, we're always going to continue investing back in, into the platform main kind of in, in two areas, uh, you, know, deve you know, development, which, it, which would include a little bit of R&D and then sales and marketing. Those are kind of the, the, the two areas that we focus our investment on. Okay, perfect. You, you sort of opened up two little questions for me. Um, we'll, we'll get to the, the R&D side first. Now, one of the things, uh, design services uh, uh, used to be fairly uh, labor intensive. Uh, how are you guys doing as far as automating that process? So that's, that, that is kind of the R and D, you know, part of it. We've, we are now, uh, you know, implementing our AI or our machine learning uh, product into the market. And, you know, uh, we just launched, uh, you know, a pretty significant partner. We didn't, we didn't announce it because it's, uh, you know, just kind of due course of what we do. But a company called Plygem, uh, they are a very large company uh, out there. They are using our AI. And basically, I've said this before, instead of a human spending 30 to, you know, sometimes 60 minutes on, you know, mapping out a home so that someone can design it, our AI software can now do that in 45 seconds. The quality is not as good. You know, they're, they're compared to a human, the quality of our AI is, you know, we're trying to come up on, you know, a rating scale, call it about 60% of what a human can do. But we're seeing some interesting data on our AI that if, if you can get a homeowner designing in 45 seconds, instead of waiting for a day to, you know, granted they're, they're receiving a much higher quality project. The, you know, we're seeing some interesting data. There's a person listening on the line here that I'm working with an investor who's actually helping me a lot on understanding some of this data. And it's very interesting. We're seeing some interesting buying behavior you know, consumers are clicking on ordering a sample or give me a quote or find a quote, uh, a pro. So the R and D side of our AI is, is very interesting. And I'll say one more thing kind of on our, you know, R and D, uh, the, the, the data science of our business is, is a huge focus of, of ours going into 2021 and you know I'll piece it all together so we want to show our customers an ROI of anyone using our platform you know we can show them that that that, that homeowner is actually buying their their product and the the way the value chain works right now that it, it, it's very kind of convoluted often our manufacturer customers don't have any vision or clarity into whether people actually buy products. So we're through our data science, we're bringing some of that. And the data that we have, like I said, we have 3 million homeowners coming to our platform. That's only growing. 
they're, you know, on it sometimes on average of 25 minutes, which in the internet world is a huge amount of time. And we're collecting data, you know, tens of millions of pieces of data that will inform us to what that user is doing. So what we want to be able to say to our, our customers, you know, those 10,000 homeowners that came to our application in a month, we need to focus, you know, with precision on 1,200 of them because these 1,200 uh, uh, of those 10,000 are, are, show the greatest likelihood that they're going to buy and so we kind of hold that, we, we hold that data. The other, you know, 8,800, we, we won't forget about those, but then we're gonna have strategies to nurture those other 8,800 so that they can become customers as well. So I don't know, I, I think that answers your- Yeah, I, I think it goes a long way, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the other thing I want to talk about was that, um, you know, we, we talk about disrupting a, a massive industry. Um, there's a company that's kind of popped up in the past with you guys, but um, I brought this up with our, our subscribers, but there's a company called Hover. Um, Hover has raised something north of $170 million uh, over the last couple of years. And they're really they're almost going toe to toe with you in terms of where they're going after this opportunity. Um, it, 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 there, there's other companies out there going after this. And if anything, it's a signal of how, um, how big the opportunity looks. Um, what, what can you say about some of the other sort of technologies out there or just some of the other big players that are out there? How, how do you see yourselves up against these guys? So, you know, I saw, I saw the announcement hover, you know, um, I'll, I'll get a plug in for our stock here. You know, they're trading at, uh, I think, seven times revenue. I know we aren't. Um, the, tongue in cheek uh, uh, to all those investors out there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, so, so I see Hover as they're, they're kind of, and, and I don't want to get too nuanced here, but they're, you know, we're, we're competing against them in, in the market there. You know, we're, we're also a little bit different in that we, in some degree, we're direct competitors with Hover. You know, in other ways, we're not direct competitor. And the main, the main significant reason that we're not always a direct competitor with Hover is that Hover primarily focuses on just the professional. So the professional contractor or the professional insurance adjuster. Whereas Renoworks, we do focus on the contractor, not so much the insurance adjuster, uh, but we do, but we're, we're earlier on in the value chain. What I, where I like our advantage over Hover is that we're, you know, working with the manufacturer partners that we have, we're in direct contact with the homeowner and direct contact with the, the demand side. So I think we're better positioned, notwithstanding the crazy investment that they have. I, you know, that, that kind of makes my jaw drop sometimes. But I still think we're better positioned with our manufacturer customers to influence that the beginning of the value chain and the, and the homeowner. So we want to be able to monetize that. So that's how we kind of see, uh, you, you know, how, how hover plays, how we play in that market. But you and I, Paul kind of talked about it. it. It's, it's, it's a great market to be in. There's lots of people who are investing money kind of in the AEC industry, you know, um, uh, architect, engineering, and construction. So we're kind of part of that. How how do we see, you know, I, I'm not naive enough to know that, wow, they've got a lot of money. Uh, we need to kind of take a look at that in, in many different ways. So we've got a good partner in Eagle View. 
uh, and Eagle View is they are direct competitors with Hover, so they they see Hover as way more of a a, a threat than than RenoWorks, and so and 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 Eagle View is they're owned by Vista Equity Partners, so they they got good financial backing. They they they're quite a bit larger than Hover. And so we kind of, you know, it's an interesting partnership with Eagle View because again, similar to how we differentiate against Hover, it's the same differentiation that we have with Eagle View. We're at the beginning of the value chain. We see, we have a different perspective on, on the industry. So I think that Eagle View sees, you know, some opportunity in working with us a little closer uh, and, and, you know, I look forward, you know, there's, there's other players out there. CoreLogic is, is another kind of competitor to both uh, Hover and EagleView, Nearmap. Uh, you know, all these companies are, you know, they're, they're approaching billion dollar value, valuations. And, you know, I think a lot of people see you know, disruption, you know, that, that can happen in this industry. And, and um, I mean, what, what I really liked about uh, where you guys are positioned, you mentioned it was, uh, and we call it a moat, but you, you, ha you control uh, such a large piece of the manufacturer product library that is so instrumental in, in sort of, you know, advancing this industry. So, um, being that close to that, this sort of the beginning of the food chain, I think makes you really interesting or, or positions you very well with all these technology players. So I, I think, um, you know, people should uh, take a good look and, and understand the, the sort of unmonetized, well, not unmonetized, but th there's such uh, a value, sort of hidden value in that relationship and that library that you've already got with these manufacturers. So. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, how this all plays out. Um, that we're, we're almost running out of time. I just want to uh, give you an opportunity to sort of talk about, you know, if there's a parting message or um, sort of any key point or, or something that investors should look out for over the next six months, um, this is your chance to, to talk directly to everybody. Okay. Well, thank you, Paul. And again, you know, just uh, uh, goes, you know, maybe it doesn't go without saying, you, you know, we've, we've been supported uh, very well over the years, you know, by uh, a number of investors, Paul and team and, and a whole bunch of other people. So uh, we, you know, we really appreciate everyone supporting us, continuing to, you know, talk about us and kind of keep track of what we're doing. I'm, I'm obviously the CEO. Uh, I, I, you know, have, the, the insiders within RentaWorks, including myself, we own a very good portion of, of the company. So we're, we're, you know, a lot of, a lot of things are, are riding on the line. Um, I'm very excited about where we are. Um, I'm, you know, working with some really smart people right now. Um, helping us, you know, kind of helping, you know, analyze the business model, analyze the potential of, of, of where we're going. So going into 2021, uh, it, it, you know, I think it, it represents an exciting year. Again, I think that there's definitely a lot of different growth opportunities for us to continue to kind of grow the top line and the bottom line revenue. And, and, and be another building year. So if I'm looking at 2021, there, there's some building yet to do, but there's also a, a lot of different areas for growth. 2022 is a, a, a year that I'm very much looking forward to because I think some of the, the, the true value of our platform, we're gonna start seeing some of those benefits where when I say participation in this 
you know, four or five hundred dollar, five hundred billion dollar industry. I think you're going to see more of of that from us. So that's kind of you know the the trajectory, so to speak. Perfect. So um, I'll summarize a little bit. Uh, Renworks, we've just come off a record quarter. We've got solid growth uh, with revenues. Uh, profitability now looks like it's going to stick around for a little while. You guys are operating in a very interesting, uh, dynamic and changing industry uh, where there's some market com uh, comps or comparables that are trading at significantly higher valuations. Um, Doug, I want to congratulate you on a record quarter. I want to thank you for being with us today. Mm -hmm. And uh, if somebody wants more information, uh, what's, uh, what's your website address? Uh, Renorks.com, R-E-N-O-W-O-R-K-S.com, Renorks.com. Perfect. Doug, thank you so much. And I uh, look forward to the next update uh, somewhere near in the near future. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Paul. And anyone out there that is uh, calling in from the U.S., happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Dad. Okay.